Entertainment proudly presents Habari Live. Habari Live. From Phoenix, Arizona. And you're listening to the Habari Live podcast. The show that brings you news, sports, and entertainment for people who love HabariEntertainment.com. Here are your hosts, Aisha, Jimmy, and Damon Dipline Ellison. Let's get it going. We are all the way live. Live. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Abari Live, where we keep you updated on the news, sports, and entertainment throughout the week. Like always, we are all the way live from Paradise Valley in Phoenix, Arizona. Let's get it going. Uh, this week, we got a special guest in the house, very special guest, Courtney Larson from Spindles Designs Co. Now, she does graphic design. She does art, right, and in different categories. Also, uh, you do morals, right? Yeah. Um, what is the main thing that you that you think is the main focus for your company? Right now and for the foreseeable future, it's murals. Oh, okay. Yeah, doing the big scale. Oh man, that's and that's what murals. you do is, is so it's just beautiful, man. I don't know where you get the ideas to come and they're so bright and they're so, you know what I'm saying, airy. Because I just look at it and it looks like beach. Every most everything you do is just has this idea of that's where you feel that you're at when you see your murals. And they just give a sunshine. You could tell to see the sunshine in your art. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is. It's just wow. It's thank dope. you. Yeah, that's you know? a huge compliment. And yeah, that's, man. That's a big emotion I'm trying to evoke. Right. The positivity. Yeah. It's something where you look at it and you're just kind of drawn in. Yeah, you can see it. You can, it's like a, a mission of happiness in your in your art, and it's it's really dope, man. Let's in fact let's show a sub couple things that she's done. Uh, let's roll this re- this clip real fast and uh, check out some of her art. go all right we back yeah to put some music to it next time mm-hmm. give it a little feeling you know what i'm saying but <laughs> it's my it. first time right music. yeah we want to start doing that more often you know just for people to see what yeah. the what the guests are doing you know what i mean and start giving them a little idea of what they do um so how did you get this design company started what was your the basis of of you starting your design company yeah i have been a lifelong artist i would say always interested in it always making something and then i went to school for uh fine art and then decided to do a business major as well (laughs) so ended up leaving asc with two degrees because i knew i'm like i i'm pretty sure i want to work for myself and uh i did feel like i could do something in the arts and uh, it felt very compelled to just to keep making something and I, i just really had a maybe delusional right. idea that I could really do something and yeah. work for myself and have a business. And so I think around 2015, mm-hmm. you know, I was the, the jobs I had right after, like right after college that I thought was my dream job really didn't work out. And then I kind of, you know, jellyfished right, around right. a little bit. <laughs> and then, yeah, around 2015, I'm like, I really have nothing to lose. I'm not in any crazy, perfect, secure job. So mm-hmm. I just decided to go for it. Mm-hmm. I started my company and just said yes to every project. There like you go. anything that came in, I was doing chalkboard menus for mm-hmm. restaurants around town. Wow. For weddings, that was a big trend at the moment. Yeah. Doing chalkboard, chalkboard signs. Wedding. Yeah. yeah. Oh, those are yeah. pretty. They're very nice. So, yeah, that's kind of how I started. And then, uh, yeah, so I did kind of hand lettering stuff with signage. I also am a watercolor artist. So mm. I did random commissions and right. uh just kind of grew and evolved and so i've been doing it ever since 2015 wow. so that's coming on like eight years now right, right. <laughs> so crazy. how long did you think it took for you to get settled where you're like you know what i feel as though this is this is what i'm doing and i'm, I'm in a good position and and i can yeah. i i can settle this as my full-time job and i i don't feel nervous mm. about what i'm doing I uh, probably took a couple years. Okay. So um, at the time, I was also a makeup artist. Okay. And so 
I was doing wedding makeup a lot. Okay. And that was sort of what was a little bit like the day job. Right. While I got my own more artwork centered go. work going. Right. And yeah, I think after a year or two, I was able to stop doing the makeup artist mm. work. It wasn't my passion. I, I liked it and I'm glad that I had that experience, right. but. It's not it. <laughs> it, w- it was not it for me. I'm like, I just, I want to do more. And so, uh, yeah. And I think really then I had, so I was, you know, I was able to sustain myself the, mm-hmm. that whole time. And then around 2019, so just a few years ago, I had a little bit of a, like a crossroads. I'm like, I either have to really double down on this right. or, you know, maybe I look at something, something else, else right. and I'm glad I doubled down. <laughs> right. That's when I did. I did my first mural in 2019. Wow. So did the murals just come out of nowhere? Did someone just like, hey, we need a mural? Or this, or this was something that, that was your idea to put out there for people that I could do murals for you? You know what? So with the chalkboard signs, I was doing pretty large scale right. work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm like, I'm pretty sure that I could yeah, do you this. Could do it, right. I'm like, I've painted large before and I've drawn out large before. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, seems like a really easy crossover. So I was really getting interested in it. I'm like, I think that could be a cool way to express right. and, and you know, take my artwork that way. Mm-hmm. So I had been thinking about it a lot. I'm like, okay, I'm going to kind of look out for opportunities, try and figure out how to make this happen. Right. And then uh, a local artist who's now one of my good friends, mm-hmm. Kaylin Noonan. Okay. She's a really, really great muralist um, and artist. But I had happened to be kind of connected with her through a different project and right. saw that she was looking for an assistant on a oh, massive parking go. garage mural. Right. And uh, I'm like, me, 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 please <laughs> pick me. Uh, so I ended up working with her for like a month and a half wow. on a giant parking garage mural in downtown Phoenix yeah. and just fell in love with it. Right. And then um, actually then later in the year, someone I went to high school with mm-hmm. was opening an Airbnb and She knew that I did artwork and had seen that I was doing now murals. I mean, I really was just assisting on Kayla's, but uh, yeah, she hired me to do my very first one that was just me. Wow. And then how did did that feel? Getting your own, did you feel overwhelmed or you? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, big time overwhelmed. Right. But, uh, and again, I actually look back. So now my process is so different. Like what I show clients ahead Mm -hmm. of time is pretty much exactly. And I'm like, Oh man, I'm very glad that yeah. you know I had just someone to believe in me because right. I think I look back at what I showed her as what I was like my sketch of what I right. was going to put up. I'm like, <laughs> you had a lot of faith in me because <laughs> this sketch. I'm like, it's cute, but I can like unless you have a a vision or trust in the person, like I I don't know that many people would uh would have did would have went with on um, with me. <laughs> yeah, how long did it take you to complete your very own first mural for yourself, the one that you did on your own? That's a great question. I actually don't remember. Um, (laughs) It did take longer than I thought. Um, And my process, I did everything by hand. Mm. And so it was like a little bit of a tedious process. Maybe like a week or two. Wow. Okay. It took me a while, but that one mural still continues to be like one of the most popular. Wow. And like the one that I get tagged in a lot on Instagram and uh, people take photos in front of it. Yes, yes I have so hundreds much. of photos yeah. in front of this That's now, so awesome. which is very cool. That's so dope. So, with a, like with the mural, do you do you have to like get permission from the the building to do it, or do yeah. you just do it? Okay. Yeah, you. It's usually the owners that that contact you, right? The yeah. owner of a, right. a business they want to put something on the side of their building. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's it's pretty dope that you're that you're doing that though, and with the the way the city is going. Yeah. There's so much artwork in downtown. I know. It's it's, cool. it's such a, a, a yeah. great way to go because the city is moving forward and it's just dope art fashion. It's just I love the way it's going. The city's going, especially yeah. downtown. It looks so just magnificent, just riding through and seeing all the art and all the murals the and culture. everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah you yeah. can see the different cultures Definitely. that that live throughout the city and yeah, throughout man. the state. Just it's giving the city more culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is, and and yeah. that's what art is. You know, it's it's bringing that culture to the city. It's bringing a, 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 a identity, an a identity, definitely for yeah. Phoenix, and you, you know, you, you feel that, and your your murals are going to be a part of the landscape, you know, even. I hope so. Yeah, 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 you know, they can be here forever. You know, those murals last for a long time, unless you know the people move and have to take them down. But <laughs> yeah, anything oh, can happen. Yeah, anything can happen. <laughs> but 
you know, murals last for a long time, man. And it, like I said, it, it builds the identity of the city and you doing that, you're a part of that. You know what I mean? So that's pretty cool. Unless you get canceled like Kanye. You just tear all <laughs> your stuff down. You just tore it all down. Now, <laughs> do you think you would like the height, like along the highways, like you see the little rock murals in the, in the walls and things like that. Yeah. Do you ever think that one of your murals could potentially be like a, a project for like the land, the, the actual landscaping in the, yeah. in the highway? That would be awesome. And I do think about that because every once in a while you'll see like a, there'll be those big city commissions, mm -hmm. like the airport, yeah. and, um, which what they've been doing at the airport is very mm -hmm. cool. I don't know if you've been looking, but they've got some really great artwork, but as part of like the floor and the right. walls and yeah, I saw it. Yeah. I went. I went to the airport recently. Yeah, they're, they're always doing something cool. Like and that uh, the that, yeah. I was walking. Uh, you know the bridge that's over the highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they um they have stuff on it like flowers and roses and like stuff Stained like that. By, by the local. Yeah, artists. it's like a stained glass sort of look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very cool. But yeah, that would definitely be a long term vision for me. Like doing something big scale that's really. Um, yeah, part of like the everyday landscape. Yeah, just going it's past cool. everybody going past it and knowing that you did that, man, that would be. Yeah. So, who were some of your your inspirations growing up as an artist that you looked up to? Oh man, I am a sucker for all the classics. Yeah. Yeah, I love art history. Um, right out of high school, I got to go on a trip to Italy mm -hmm. and loved it. I love Europe. Um, wow. So, yeah, I'm a sucker for that. I also grew up my my mother's a very big fan of art mm -hmm. and so uh yeah i grew up like not only with art in our home but right. we would go to things and yeah so like edgar degas who did impressionism monet also yeah, monet. Mm -hmm. it's just um and then uh some of the older like the older masters like bougereau and um rubens i like the the rubenesque like all of the bodies <laughs> like yeah. just uh, very tactile and yeah, so that's dope. I like dope. I like the old yeah. ones, and then I, you know, I, of course, I like like more of the modern art, the Rothkos, and mm -hmm. but um, and Mary, yeah. So I like some of the older, oh, the classic, yeah, classic, classic I like art. um Banksy. Yeah, Banksy's a good yeah. one. Yeah. I got to see. I uh, went to Seattle recently, and I stumbled mm -hmm. upon. A Banksy exhibit. Wow. That was fun. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't there an art museum in St. Louis? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there definitely. must be. Definitely. Got this. Every several. major city. It's several. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, oh, no. St. Louis is give or take. <laughs> right. I don't know. <laughs> right. They gave us a hockey team and took away the football team. Man. Oh, really? <laughs> they only like baseball in St. Louis. You know that. Yeah. They, it's, 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 it's baseball and uh, hockey out there. That's all that matters is baseball. Yep. Hockey. Baseball. And I don't. Hockey really watched either of those two so one so you went to asu huh yeah. all four all four years yeah 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 that's that's dope and you said you majored in in art history or just i did fine art drawing okay and then i did business marketing what's the difference between fine art drawing and what you said you did uh, specializing in watercolors and maybe in sketching what's the difference you know okay that actually is something i do wish i could tell younger me like Hey, maybe, like, I already knew how to, I did not really know how to draw. Do you know okay. what I mean? But, like, I wish I would have done maybe a, like, majored in printmaking right. or, like, a skill or, or, like, painting. Okay. I went with a little bit of the safe option because I'm okay. like, I'll get really good at this. Right. Um, where then I saw some of my peers make sort of different decision on that. Like, oh, I chose printmaking because I didn't know how to do it. Okay. I'm like, oh man, that's smart. Right. Um, yeah. So with uh, fine art drawing, I did a lot of like figure drawing and. Oh, okay. You um, kept doing the naked person in the room. Yeah. Okay. Loved figure drawing. Okay. Um, so you're really drawing. good at the, the the body and sculpting and things like that. I was at one point. I'm mm. a little out, a little rusty at the right. moment because it hasn't been a big part of my artwork for a little while. Right. But even with doing a drawing degree, you're doing a lot of painting and watercolor classes yeah. and stuff. So, um, and honestly, like everything feeds into itself. Mm -hmm. So, definitely, um, you know, in the last few years, I've learned calligraphy. Oh, okay. The better I got at calligraphy, yeah. the more steady my hand was definitely. in other areas. Right. So, 
all of it really does work together. Right. And calligraphy, I mean, it's it's makes your lettering and all your your fonts look so good. So and, and then it's something people can't replicate with a computer. So it's that's pretty dope to learn. Well, and that's so to brag a little bit mm -hmm. with you know, I got really interested in typography in college. Okay. And then had always been doodling letters. Mm -hmm. That was always a thing. Definitely. High school and middle school. And then kind of learned the art form of it in college. But then learning calligraphy, right. now that's sort of like a cool thing that I get to offer mm -hmm. is that I, and, and it sets me apart with the murals right. because Definitely. I'm drawing my words by hand. Definitely. And yeah, it can kind of, you can kind of pick out mm -hmm. when things are just a computer type. You can tell. You can kind of tell. Because it's, it's irreplaceable that, that, that way you're moving. The way the. Everything flows. It just yeah. flows. Yep. Yeah. It's so so much that's the, that's the goal. But that's something I'm like, I know that that kind of helps set apart because mm -hmm. it feels more cohesive instead of letters slapped on right. top of something yep. else. Yep. It, it, it flows it, better. And it doesn't I'm, look stenciled. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I, trying to avoid. I, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I take of myself as a little bit of an artist. So I think eh, I can fine. draw a little bit, you know what I mean? So I know how much time it takes. Do you take, do you think of yourself as a freehand artist or do you, do you have to use a lot of tools to make sure you get everything? I know that's most people, they have to use most tool, a lot of tools and stuff. And that's probably the best way to do it. Cause if you go freehand, you probably going to make something. <laughs> but when you're painting, you know, yeah. I don't know, what do you, do you make sure you go and you draw your, uh, you sketch on the wall, what you're going to do, you get it, your rulers out, put everything, how you're going to put, where you're going to put it in place. It, it's a lot of planning taken in, into it, right? It is a lot of planning. Um, you know, I've done it both ways. I've done it where uh, I just draw directly on the wall. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'll usually kind of block out with like tape where everything's going to go so that okay. I can visually see it first before I take pen to the wall. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I've learned like my favorite system now is to project up the image I already. So I'll get my image exact. Wow. So I'll draw it all out first uh -huh. and then project it up. But with projecting, it's still like you have right. to tweak it and you have to like it, it just basically gets things mostly in the right spot. Right. And right. then, and then you, you have to there. finesse it from there. Right. Now that's amazing though. Projecting you using an actual projector to do that. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. So how would, if you were in a situation where it was a lot of light, would you do that at at nighttime? Yeah. So okay. actually I just finished Tempe marketplace. I did dope. a big mural over there. That's got, it's the one interactive chalkboard one that I just replaced it. Okay. So that one was mine. Um, I did that two years ago. Oh wow. really? Yeah. So that same wall. You know, oh, I was so happy with that because it got used so much. Right. Like every time I went, it was just filled up and people would kind of, you know, sometimes they would stay in the line, sometimes they wouldn't, but it was just cool to see yeah. it get used. And, but that also meant that they had to wipe it down nearly right. every week. So it got a lot of, uh, it got a lot of use, which was great. But now, you know, after two years, it was starting to look a little bit shabby. So we redid it. And the concept is basically there's these three main designs and they all flow together. Okay. But they're big photo backdrops. Uh -huh. Like and and just to encourage people to I don't know, encourage positivity yeah. and, and being just excited and, and it's been fun. Even when I was painting it, it was fun to see people kind of selfie in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> like even that's, when it wasn't finished. Man, that's the ultimate. But uh yeah, with that project. So that's outside. Right. And yeah, uh, having to project up. <laughs> it's like I think, I think okay. the day that I went up and put up, I think I got there at four thirty a.m. So that was wow. rough. And it was so <laughs> cold. But yeah, there are, there are things like that you don't think about with right. being an artist. No man, people don't think it's about it. It's not just man. the painting. No. It's like I had a million layers on. I'm so cold. It's four in the morning. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, and you have to like, braid those elements. That's that's tough. Yeah, but I'm like. I'm I'm like, this is crazy that I love this. Like, because this is not a comfortable thing. <laughs> right. This is really, like I said, I would be so excited because I, I love art and drawing. So I know that would be my my all-time ultimate goal. Because even this, this is the goal. We're still working. We're still putting in our 40 hours. We just started last year. So hopefully, you know, we can get lucky like you and we can, we can start going full-time business on Abari Entertainment. 
but yeah absolutely yeah yeah it's it's an honor to to talk to you though because you know you've you've done a lot throughout the city uh we got to get down and uh and check out your your uh designs down there at tempe marketplace too because that's that's yeah. pretty awesome man. yeah head over there there is some cool stuff over there yeah we're gonna have to go check that out we had like also like you know what I'm saying a couple of great artists like in here too like those two right here those um oh yeah she she's dope. She, she did, made uh, those. Yeah, she made those for us. You have a picture uh, right awesome. behind your head. Yeah, he made that for us. He's a great sketch artist. Oh, that's uh, so cool. Yeah, he's he's really cool. Uh, like, and I drew... then we got a uh, Shory Williams here. Yeah, yeah, she's a great artist. There also. are so many. It's so many. amazing local artists. Amazing. We have such a good. We do a good good group of very talented yeah, people. And I think it's that uh, album cover. I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think I think we are very <laughs> underrated. Um, when it comes to the to the <clears throat> country, the the minor artist that's coming out here, and I think we're doing a better job of, of of letting people see what we have in Phoenix and uh and and putting it on display throughout the city. Um, it's so many good artists, man. And that's why we bring them on because you know I I love art and you know art was my life, and I, I just think love talking to you guys. It inspires me, you know. Art and food is what's going. I think Ooh. art and food. The yeah. food together, oh, too. Man. That we have good places. I think that's what's gonna really set Phoenix apart mm -hmm. and set us yeah. on the map. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like actually make us be like a oh New York. You know, New York is good for fashion. Fa it's yeah. number one for fashion. Right, California yeah. number two. Right. So that would the food and the art would give us that. Mm -hmm. This is what they're known for. Definitely yeah. niche. Yeah, and the I mean, so since I've lived here forever. Mm. I have seen the city evolve a lot. Right, right. And even just, I did a project right my last year uh, at ASU. Mm -hmm. And it was a big sculpture. Then we moved the sculpture from ASU's campus to downtown, right by Mon Orchid. Yeah. So um, it lived on Roosevelt Row for years. But in just the time that, like, from the time we it on that empty lot mm -hmm. until like then eventually it got taken down like so i've been familiar with and and have spent a lot of time on roosevelt row it is wild right how different it is but right. i i think all positive yeah um you know some downsides yeah, of definitely. like <laughs> you know <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it, it's a tough thing when definitely. artists are being priced out of the place that they made beautiful mm -hmm. but that's its own other topic yeah, but it is, it is wild i mean and it's I, I love seeing that the city is really like there's so much focus on art and design mm -hmm. and good restaurants definitely. and good like i i do feel like it's going in a nice direction definitely. i think so too man I, memphis memphis also has a lot of uh, great artists out there memphis yeah i've seen a lot of murals when i was out there really that's yeah. cool. a lot memphis is um it's i think rough, of memphis is more of a, a music Blue yeah, city, big, yeah, big but, but like uh, they have a lot of artists, like yeah, yeah they and uh, they barbecue. You was on Bill, were you on Bill Street? We, I went right. We was right next to um, the uh, the Grizzly Stadium. I think that's, I don't know if that's on Bob Bill. I think it's just downtown though. Yeah, that's downtown. Yeah, and yeah. like they they have a lot of stuff out there too. Like I, we was uh, so when you go from Arkansas to um, Memphis, mm -hmm. they uh, you got to go on this. Like this bridge, just a huge bridge, and um, you see the uh, bass, uh, the bass uh, pro shop. I think you're going over to Mississippi. Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Yeah. And you see the um, the pyramid. The pyramid. They have yeah. a pyramid. We like, uh, it's, it's nice. It's really nice. We used to go down by the pyramid and let off fireworks and stuff during the Fourth of July. That's why they let their fireworks off right. over, the, over the pyramid. So we've been down there, watched the fireworks, and you know, kicked it, man. I used to like Memphis, man, a lot, man. You got a lot of family. Yeah, because, you know, I used to go out of town. I don't right. go out of town now. Right. So I don't know if it's different or what. But I want to do, I do want to say, um, if you enjoy healthy snacks, if so, head over to our website, uh, harbarientertainment.com. Click on the link for Naked Nutrition. The banner is at the top. Browse and select snacks from, our, from the variety. Uh, the first time you buy something is 15% off uh, for first time buyers. Um, healthy snacks um all type of nutritional um snacks and all type of things that you the, have the healthy uh the whey protein whey proteins mm -hmm. definitely different proteins definitely if you're working out uh they have all type different stuff so try it out go ahead and check it out and uh we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back here with courtney talk a little bit more about art 
Dun 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 dun. Abar Entertainment Films present. There's only one name for news. With Damon and Aisha. Habari Live Podcast. Habari Entertainment. A race against time. On a quest for glory. Habari News Weekly, HabariEntertainment.com. Catch us for more. Visit us, HabariEntertainment.com. We are back. We're here with uh, Courtney Larson from Spindles Design Co. We've been talking to her for a minute about her uh, path to owning a business and, and getting one going. Do you guys have a location yet? Or are you just all just working out of your, your home right now? Oh, yeah. We've been up at, uh, right, actually, not that far from here, Scottsdale Quarter, like right behind, uh, right behind Scottsdale Quarter. Okay. A little office space there. Been there for like two and a half years. And is it just you or do you have a couple people you work with? I have uh, I have my one, like, main go-to person. Mm -hmm. um, our title is assistant. We need to change that because she does <laughs> so much more than that. Right. And, uh, yeah, she's so talented in her own right. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know. But the business was kind of gone through different phases. At one right. point, I had associate artists uh, just because the work was kind of too much. Right. And so I had a bit more of a team. And so that kind of goes in, and flows. And occasionally when I am painting, I'll have assistants. Come I have kind of my go-to people right, that right. come and help just, you know, if a timeline's really tight mm -hmm. and or uh, just kind of need extra hands. Definitely. So you gotta have yeah, people you can trust. it's like I've got my kind of little community of people. Right, but, right. Um, yeah, sometimes like kind of work together. Right. That's dope. Um, and we hope nothing but best from you for your uh, spindles. And we hope Thank that you, you guys do uh, great this year. I, I want to ask you uh, one last question, though. How did you make it through the COVID and, and everything that was going on for the last, you know, three years here? Were you able to get through pretty cool? Because you took you pretty much when you started, right? Yeah, that's when I really was. I mean, I'd, I'd already been going, but that was definitely pivotal moment because mm -hmm. I was not sure. Also at the time I was really, um, really, really heavily doing weddings. Right. Right. And then all of a sudden weddings were gone. <laughs> canceled Definitely. for the moment. Right. So yeah, that was a little moment of like, uh, okay. But I had, I had a couple murals under my belt mm -hmm. before that. And then got in with the Airbnb group oh, yeah. like just kind of and so the short-term rentals were big during covid because right. yeah, that's that was kind people, of yeah that's how people got got together that's how people was able to do things yeah so yeah just sort of lucky timing and lucky connection there of being involved with the airbnbs so right. i did a lot of those mm -hmm. while the weddings were on pause so yeah i i, I feel very fortunate in that because it could have very well not. It just, right. it got into just a little yeah. pocket. But um, yeah. And then, you know, the weddings came back online basically yeah. the next year. Right. And we still had, you know, then those, all of the weddings that had been paused, then all right. hit They're, the next right. year. <laughs> so it was like intense. Yeah. A lot going on, a lot of projects at once. But yeah. So it, for this year, I've sort of, uh, I've sort of, dedicated myself more to the mural work okay. but with the weddings you know uh i'll just tease that were uh my assistant slash a million other things recal her and i are working together on figuring out how to bring weddings like bring our wedding work right more accessible right. uh beyond just the the fully custom packages that yeah. i was offering right so just give a little people a little rundown on uh, what you offer and and how to contact you and uh, maybe some of your your price packages and things of that that nature. Yeah, uh, so mural work is definitely what I'm focusing on for the year. Mm -hmm. A lot of local work, but I have opened myself up this year to do traveling. Right. So I would love to do an out of state mural. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm like, 
if you know for the right fit i definitely foresee that being something i'd like to do this year mm -hmm. but for local people i do businesses short-term rentals uh you know like restaurants outdoor spaces even if you just have if you're a business owner and have a blank wall like right. on the outside of your building that you just want to have something that's more eye-catching yeah. those are the kind of projects that i get excited about right um just something that it's like i want to bring life to an area yeah. so that's that's what I personally as like the lead artist I'm working on, but with the weddings, I still have a soft spot in my heart for weddings. Right. I still love it. So yeah. in the next, uh, the next little while mm -hmm. we're going to be putting out more shoppable items on okay. my website. On website. And what's yeah. the website? The website is spindlesdesignco.com. Okay. Okay. And that is where you can find a lot of information about like, I'm, I like to be very upfront with my pricing Good. on everything because, uh, I want to respect your time. And Definitely. I also just, I want to be, a, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, you can find a lot of that information there and that's where you can find my online shop as well. Um, there are a few items up there now, but yeah, coming soon will be more kind of wedding geared right. items because Definitely. again, I just, I love that world and, uh, have a lot of, uh, work I think could be, you know, uh, nice to have as part Definitely. of your wedding day. So, and, and her, her work is beautiful. So if if you guys get a new building, yeah. you have anything new room because I'm I'm definitely we're gonna get you we're gonna hire you for one hour. That'd be awesome because we're yeah. um, we're not gonna I want to do some different things in here. But before we, I think when we move to our new building, we're gonna get out there. Yeah, yeah. we gotta. It get makes something. a great, especially like if you're in a um, you have a cool design here, but a lot of places you. Moving to an office space is just white walls right. everywhere. Definitely. And one, you know, with everything being so uh, video focused now, Definitely. you can't have a white background. You cannot. <laughs> like, you cannot. You, do, you, you have don't to have look good going on, right? against a white yep. background. Um, yeah. But beyond just that, it's like being able to go into a space every day, like mm -hmm. your, your coworkers, your employees, whatever, being able to come in and it's actually thoughtfully designed yeah. and, and cheerful and bright or. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't even have to be bright, but you know, if it's just, it's just like artistic, it's inviting. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's inviting and it makes you feel at home. Yeah. You know I mean, good art, man. It just makes you feel at home. And I, I love, um, there's nothing better than, than seeing something beautiful that makes the whole room come together. You know what I mean? And, um, like me. that's <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> so it's spindles, do, uh, spindles design.com, right? SpindlesDesignCo.com. Co. Right, and then my Instagram is the same. It's Instagram okay. Design Co. Okay. Oh my gosh. No, it's not. <laughs> it's it's Spindles Design Co. She said no, it's oh not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Spindles Design Co. And she's yeah. on Instagram. Uh, her Instagram page is very great. She shows a lot of great art. She's very good. Um, she also, the website is very well designed and she has a lot of information on there. So make sure you guys check it out. Um, we're going to stay here with us. We're going to go about over a little news real fast. And now, this week's Habari News Weekly with Damon Dipling Ellison. Sponsored by... Uh, no one. But if you want to get some healthy snacks, make sure to go to www.habarientertainment.com. Click on the Naked Nutrition uh, banner, browse, and get you some snacks. 15% off the first purchase. Now, um, real fast, we want to go over uh, Governor Hobbs. Um, she issued a executive order to improve Arizona death penalty process. I think we, uh, we killed like three people after our eight years pause in, in, uh, last year, you know, we, we kind of upped up the, the ante and just thought often people all of a sudden, I don't know what's going on, but I don't know, man. The, the death Deucey penalty. said he was going to make a statement before he left office. Yeah. Deucey. Deuce. Ducey. All right, um, but yeah, but uh, we um, I just you know, the death penalty is a tough one, man, because we get a lot of stuff wrong, and we put people behind bars, and it's been the wrong person many times. I could not imagine killing the wrong person, and it's been many times <laughs> you know, where you know. the, the the person that's been on death row has mm. been executed, mm -hmm. and then we find out later he didn't do it. Just months later, right. That they didn't do it or wasn't DNA it, comes out. Whoops. Right. <laughs> you can't erase that. He's gone. So that's just. I understand, man. You want punishment for bad. For, for but those crime. families, when that happens, those families have the right to sue for wrongful death. Yeah. 
even yeah, though then, they're on death row. Yeah. Right. And who pays for that? We do. Taxpayers. But we also <laughs> pay it for them while they're sitting in prison too. Right. So. so it's a it's a triple L. So um I guess she she exec- she put the order in to improve oversight and transparency when it comes to Arizona death penalty process. A lot of people are upset about it, but she's saying she just wants to have more transparency for we can know for sure the people that are being killed and what's going on, you know what I mean, with the with the death penalty. Uh the Department of Corrections, Rehabilitation and what is it, reentry, ADCRR, lethal injection, drug or gas chamber chemical chemical procurement process, the ex- ex- execution protocols and the staffing considerations, including training and experience, all going to be looked at. So they want to look at all those things, make sure everything's in line. I, okay, you know so they're I mean? just making sure they're updating their policies, procedures, right, right. and you don't their want protocols any... on how they handle certain situations exactly. that, that may arise. Right, so you don't want any mistakes. Okay. Um, you don't want you know people, you know, we've had people who've been put in death penalty and taken the pill and still lived. Right. We've had people, you know, been in those situations where they just go through a health pain and then they're still alive. You know, we've had horrible mistakes in those situations. So, yeah, definitely. You don't want that. We have, uh, uh, we got Dean Kane here. Uh, you know, I'm not a big Dean Kane fan, but, <laughs> but in surprise, uh, 18, 18 months ago, Dean Kane will be starring in a, a movie with a Valley 12 year old who wrote a film. So I guess uh, 18 months ago, Ellie Mae Smith was playing a small role in a big faith-based film mm-hmm. when an on-set conversation with uh, with a man most known as a Superman led to a life-changing opportunity. So she'll be making a movie called Miracle at Manchester with Dean Kane. It's about a young man battling cancer and how the power of a miracle can save him. Uh, she is from Surprise, so that's pretty dope. I and, thought, uh, think that wasn't the movie name, uh, wasn't it uh, called Hope or something like that? Uh, I no, remember reading a Miracle, little bit of... Uh, Miracle at Manchester. No, uh, the, the movie that she was playing in with oh, him. Oh, okay. I don't I think know it was called that. Hope. I don't know about and that. And I think it was a, a... They were on break hmm. during while they were filming or something like okay. that. And they started and discussing they the was just having They was just having a general conversation and uh-huh. it came up well, and it, she the, told the, 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 the movie. So cool. Is about a little girl named Hope. So, who was diagnosed with a rare blood disease? Okay. The family's faith is tested as they all fight for answers to keep her alive. Uh, Smith uh, shared Kane re- uh, read her script uh, right then and there and, and called the president of JC Films, Jason Campbell. Jason contacted, contacted me and he wanted me to write more. I ended up writing 75 page full feature film. So, that's pretty dope, man. Somebody from wow. Surprise uh, getting the film going, man. And, we, we love that's to see awesome. that. Yeah, at that's awesome. 12, yeah. At 12, at 12, you've got a 75 full page wow. feature length film that's written and it's produ- getting ready to be produced. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's pretty dope. Incredible. And, uh, yeah, that's incredible. And uh, we want to give uh, a shout out to her. That's that's pretty dope. We got, uh, let's bring up this George Santos man. Uh, George Santos has been in trouble since he came in, the embattled Republican. Is strongly denying claims that he once performed as a drag queen, even though we got pictures. <laughs> you got it? Yeah, they. I couldn't find them earlier. I downloaded them, but I forgot to put them in the reach me. So. Oh, so you adding it now? Yeah, I'm trying to add them in. Trying to hurry up, please. Cause he's slow. I I sent it to him earlier, but anyway. Uh. He is strongly denying these claims. Uh, the most recent obsession from the media claiming that I am a drag queen or performed as a drag queen queen is categorically false, the congressman said. After a Brazilian uh, drag performer posted a photo of herself with another individual dressed in drag that she claims is Santos, the media continues to make outrageous claims about my life while I am working to deliver results. I will not be distracted nor phased by this. The tweet continues. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, so he, I had a picture of him that... in drag, though, bro. I sent it to you in the email. It's not in the email. Gmail. Check to Gmail. Me, to, to me. I already downloaded it. I That's think. The crazy uh, it's in the downloads. Santos is doing anything to distract the. the all this that's coming out is mm-hmm. just a big distraction from the reason why 
from everything that's else going on all around the, him. All the lies. All the lies, him, everything yeah. that he did to get himself into Congress. Lied mm-hmm. on his application, lied about the schools he went to, lied mm-hmm. about the companies he worked mm-hmm. for. Yeah. And then came out and admitted, okay, yeah, I lied. I, I was just buffering my resume. Yeah, so he said he, he's been under scrutiny since he's lying and uh, after he lied on his education, his work, his family history. Uh, he claimed he was Jewish, descended of the Holocaust. Uh, he faces federal and local investigators in the campaign finances issues. He's got a lot of troubles going on right now. So not looking good for him. He did come out as gay, so I don't understand why it's, why a, it's a big, a big deal, deal that he he's been in drag. drag. I don't understand. Who cares? Who cares? It's not a big deal. And I don't understand why people are trying to if put it. If he came out as gay, why is it a big deal? You came, you, right. You're in drag. It's not a big deal. Who cares? I don't understand. But this Live is, your life, homie. This is supposed to be him in drag, the picture that we're showing up here, you see. Uh, but we don't know for sure, you know, uh, that he say it's not him. I don't know, because I just pulled down the other picture and this one, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, bro. It kind of looked like him to me, man. I don't bro, know. come on. Now. Yeah, that kind of looks like come him, Come on G. now. Y'all see this? Look at the switch real quick. Oh, look at the switch. I'm ready? You see I'm that? Ready. Yeah, man. That look, that's him. That's, that's him, him, G. That's, that's him, him, man. He can say whatever you want to say. That's him. That's him. The same smile, you can tell, the you same can... T structure, everything. Makeup ain't gonna hide that. That's you, Mr. Santos. Sir. <laughs> if you don't want to take this makeup L, in a wig, that's all you did. Take the L. With a, a brunette wig. <laughs> Come on now. All right. So in tech news, we got a uh, Google is cutting 12,000 jobs, man. It's been a tough week, man, for the tech companies, man. Amazon, I think, laid off 10,000. Um, uh, who else laid off? I forgot who else laid off somebody, but this was, this job I think it cut. Was Amazon, Google, it was somebody else, man. I forgot. Was who it was. Meta? Was it Facebook? It was someone else. But uh, the cuts is going to be about six percent of their their global workforce that they're cutting. Um, yes. All these tech jobs, they're just they're bloated. They're they're they they have too much money and too much. They're giving out and they're just losing, and they're not helping their their um, stock owners right now. So <laughs> stockholders. Have to be happy. That's the number one person they care about, not the workers, unfortunately, in this American capitalism country. So those are the people that will be losing their jobs. I I hate to see it, man, but uh, you might have to go grab one. Uh, Go on to Netflix real fast. We got a Netflix password sharing will soon cost you extra. (laughs) <laughs> so everybody sharing though you know you everybody sharing we all sharing we know it we all doing I use it <laughs> i use disney plus and uh hbo max that's um, it everybody got an account of somebody where i use my cousin's netflix and I'll he show used you. my hulu I'll and show my you. brother <laughs> that's, yeah. how, that's how we do it you know what I'm saying? So, i shall use my how mom how much extra are they charging now? Netflix looks like it's finally getting very serious about cracking down the password sharing. The company said it expects to roll out paid sharing to more users during the fiscal corner uh, quarter to a, the ability to pay money to share passwords. They're not going to tell you how much it is. Um, they said more than 100 million homes currently share passwords. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck on that, bro. So I don't know. I don't think they want to tell people how much they're going to charge because they're probably going to lose a whole group of people again. Yeah. Because last time they they moved up their prices, a lot of people left. So we'll see. In the uh, gaming news. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> uh, boo, this game. We got um, Marvel's Avengers could be ending post-launch support soon. I'm pretty happy about this. I'm not going to lie to you. This game Comic sucks. Book- Oh my gosh. Yeah, man. This game sucks this, so bad. This is, we're going to celebrate the ending of this video game. You know, I know I'm an old head, but I still, when I played it, I was like, this is trash. <laughs> it, it was just bad, man. I'm going back to Nintendo 64. Man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game is pretty bad. Oh, man. It's, it's A really recent bad. report indicates that the Tomb Raider developer, Square Enix, is likely preparing to announce the end of Marvel's Avengers post launch support. Crystal Dynamics reportedly plans to end the post-launch support of a good game. While the former Square Enix subsidiary 
hasn't made any official statements to that effect. An announcement should be forthcoming and the report is, is correct. Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix released the licensed brawler Marvel's Avenger in 2020. The main story was garbage and the play <laughs> was terrible and it was just bad, man. Uh, so I mean, the, I, me the mechanics aren't terrible. Man, it just kept, it, it, just, it was just repetitive. repetitive. It's, it's just so the same repetitive. stuff and then you don't see any good enemies. Like, I want to see some, you know, Dr. Doom. I want to see some, like, that was right. terrible. I think they fought, you fought MODOK and that was it? And Taskmaster, that was terrible, man. I forgot he was even in there. Ooh. And he was even a hard boss. All you do yeah, is dodge man. and shoot. Right. That's terrible, dude. But anyway, we're gonna uh boo them and move over to uh <laughs> to the comic books, man. Let's see. Comic book corner. They talking about we got a, a Rainbow Six movie is finally coming. Uh um, Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, Michael B. Jordan will be starting. So they're going to try to make this into an adaption into a movie. We'll see what happens. Rainbow Six? Yeah, it's a video game. Okay. Um, I'm asleep. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm asleep. It's, it's been out for a long time, man. Yeah, it's been out for a minute. For a long, I, I used to play it on Super Nintendo, Nintendo when I was little. So, you know, it's it's old school game, man. <clears throat> it's always, to me, been very difficult because you have to tell everybody what to do. So it's like an interactive where you... you, you yeah, it's it's really really like soldier. -like. It's like it's like Call of Duty, but like more advanced. Yeah, it's way more advanced because you like have to you have to know everything everybody's doing. Everybody, you know, hey, I'm going here. And y'all like in a team. And then you got to put like claymores on the walls. Man, it's and it's like, crazy. You got to know where you're bro, at. It's, man, it's a lot. It's crazy. Oh, that's why I can't. That's why I don't play Call of Duty. I, I can't do it, man. It's I mean, too much for me. I go me, out there and get smoked in two seconds. Man, so, like, how y'all? Do I don't know how they do that shit, but I just be dead. But anyway. <laughs> Um, that's big, man. So I, I'm, I, I like to see Michael B. Jordan in that. We'll see how, what they do with that. But, uh, we also got production about to start on, uh, WandaVision spinoff, Coven, uh, the Coven of Chaos. I think I reported on this last week, but, uh, more light is coming on the director's list and, uh, supporting cast. So that's pretty big. And, uh, we'll get to see that soon. Um, I guess I'm just going to I'm going in my out and going to you next. In sports, we got uh, the playoffs for the NFL. We got the Jags and the Chiefs, the Bengals and the Bills, Giants, Eagles, Cowboys, 49ers. Yes, I think sir. we was uh, I was wrong on a um, couple games. Oh yeah, you week. was on I think you said the uh, 49ers about to get smoked. No, no, no. I picked the 49ers to win. I picked um I didn't pick Jacksonville to win. That's who. I I picked Jacksonville to to to, to lose. I thought they would lose. But they're going to lose this week. There's no way they beating the Chiefs. Um, I got the Bengals beating the Bills. I, I didn't pick the Bills last time either. I picked them to lose. So I was wrong on that one too. Uh, the Giants, they've never lost three times to a team ever. So they're going to surprise the Eagles and beat them. That's my pick. Giants beat the Eagles. All the Eagles fans are going to be looking sad. I'll be happy about that. Um, then you got Cowboys, 49ers. I'm sorry, Cowboys, but it's over with. 49ers. Yeah, the 49ers are going to kill them. They smop them up oh like, like every time. They get smopped up. Uh, the Suns got a win uh, without Booker finally over the Nets, who doesn't have KD, so it probably really don't count. They had Kyrie, though. Yeah. But Kyrie, I saw the game last No, I was watching the – Um, I don't know if it was last night. No, it was the day before yesterday. Uh -huh. I was watching the um, Golden State Warriors. Right. Bro. Steph is such a good shooter. It's not fair. Bro, he picked up the ball, and he just did like this. Right. And hit half court. I'm like, bro, that's not fair. If I – I don't know. That ain't fair to me. That's all hey, I know. Hey, man. He play, he Repetition, bro. He practices. All right. So we're going to go into um, a quick break real fast, and we're going to come back and play the game, do the Hollywood hot this, and get up out of here. So about what about 15 minutes left on the show. All right, let's take this break.
thank you for that. Uh, this week, we will be talking about uh, Cigna. Cigna did uh, drop Fry's Pharmacy from their in-network in, uh, coverage for insurance. So if you have Cigna insurance, Fry's Pharmacy no longer accepts your insurance for medications. And this is why. Each year, um, health insurance companies and healthcare providers, they start their contract negotiations uh, dance normally around the end of the year. So right as right before open enrollment starts and things like that is right around the time when the providers will start um, doing their negotiations. Um, healthcare providers want more money, but the insurance companies want to pay less money. So this is kind of why they go back and forth um, de deciding, you know, which companies and which uh, providers will be in network or out of network. Um, so uh, Dallas based tenant healthcare uh, corporation or THC and St. Louis based uh Centene Corporation, they were in contract uh, disputes over reimbursement fees, but they managed to come to an agreement and uh, the, they came to their agreement just in time before negotiations deadline happened. Uh, so meanwhile, Phoenix Children's has until February 1st to work out its contract dispute with Bloomfield, Connecticut-based Cigna Corp. Or the hospital will no longer be considered as in-network by the insurance company. Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio-based uh, Kroger Company and Cigna ran out of time for their contract negotiations. So this is why C uh, Fry's Pharmacy no longer accepts Cigna. So if you have Fry's Pharmacy or you, you go to Kroger or whatever store has your Kroger brand, their pharmacy will not accept your insurance if you have Cigna. It's no longer in network. Uh, so you may want to try Walgreens or CVS or Rite Aid or something of that sort. Um, so it, this typically happens every year. Each year, um, health insurance companies will decide or you know, whatever happens in their contract negotiations on which providers or facilities they will and will not accept as part of their in-network or out-of-network. So this could be a potential um, factor on your end if you are a Cigna customer or a Cigna member, and that's who you get your health insurance through. So the best thing to do is to just call the 800 number listed on the back of your insurance card. Or if you have uh, the website or app downloaded for your health insurance, you can go to the app or go on their website to browse which providers are in your network. This does include for um, any of your healthcare providers, um, your primary care, your gynecologist, your um, dermatologist, things like that. You can see which providers are in your network. You just have to go to their website or give them a call. They'll be one of the representatives will be able to provide you with the list, or you can see that list online yourself for who's in your network. Um, moving on, um, this week we have Young Thug Wait, as our hot mess for the week. Just now that's a hot mess. Get ready for the week's Hollywood hot mess with Aisha Rowan. Y'all don't know how long I've been waiting to press them buttons. <laughs> Y'all just don't know how. All right. And it took you. forever to find them. No, I'm just playing. Uh, so this week's hot mess is Young Thug and one of his YSL co-defendants. They are being accused of pulling off a hand-to-hand -hand drug deal. Allegedly. While in court. Uh, during jury selection for Young Thug's RICO trial. It's uh, apparently courtroom surveillance uh, footage has captured the moment that happened on Wednesday in Fulton County Court. Khalif Adams walks over to Young Thug and clearly hands him an object. Aside from the cameras, at least two bailiffs 
were just a couple feet away and saw the entire transaction and immediately grabbed Adams. According to documents that TMZ obtained, a deputy later discovered that the object was a bag of Percocet pills. While Adams is a defendant in the, U- in the YSL RICO case, he is already serving a life without parole sentence for murder. So we're just going to wait and see what really plays out in this additional transaction that happens while he was, you know, potentially selecting the jury that's going to give him his sentence or whatever for this case. So we're just going to have to really see how this Rico case trial plays out and what, if any additional charges may come or may arise or be tagged on given the incident that occurred this past week in court. So we'll see. And we will keep you guys updated on what happens with that case as well. All right. So if it's on camera, it's on camera. That seems like a lot of a lot of things stacked against. Right. Yeah. I mean, you got the bailiff saying that it was this. You got so the you got more the tough. footage. Yeah. It, it's kind of hard to say that not nah, that wasn't me. I didn't do that. Yeah. When you know, an odd choice. Exactly. Venue. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then you know, there's been additional details um, stating that Adams, once they arrested him and grabbed him up after he did the transaction, there it was said that um, Adams had additional um, paraphernalia on him. Oh man. Um, it could have, you know, paraphernalia ranged from marijuana. To peels. So we're not really sure yeah. what's going to happen. We'll see. We'll keep you updated. But we're going to go ahead and move into trivia for loop. Okay. Wait. <gasps> Let's get ready to play trivia for loot. Sponsored by no one. But if you do go to our website at habarientertainment.com, you can click on the Naked Nutrition banner at the top of the page. You will get 15% off your very first purchase. You can do items like their cookies. They have uh, protein bars. They have uh, protein, uh, the whey protein, anything that you uh, could use for working out or if you just like to eat healthy snacks, they have that for you. All right. So moving into trivia for the loot, um, as we explained earlier, there are a total of 10 questions. If you get seven out of the 10 correct, we will donate to your charity of choice. All right. The first question is, the American Gothic is one of the most recognizable paintings in the world. Who painted it? Oh, no. I know what it is. It's the farmer and his wife with the, with their, like, the rake. I don't know who painted it. Uh, oh, no. Come on, Jimmy. Give me my I'm sounds. So give me my sounds, bro. I'm embarrassed. I've been out of school for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. No. That is going to be Grant would i would have never oh you gotta just hit the space bar the name didn't oh, hit the space me. bar next question Man, is these are... Yo, i'm trying who designed the gunging museum and i can already guarantee you i butchered the name of this museum so it's, if it's on bloopers, it's on bloopers. It is the Guggenheim. Guggenheim. I know that. <laughs> was it designed by someone with the, uh, the last name Guggenheim? Oh, no, Frank it was not. Right, I should have known that. <laughs> you hit the button too fast, homie. You did. I know. It kind of helped me out a little bit. It was Frank right? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to help. Uh, I don't know. That's all right. Just hit the space bar. We go move to the next question. I got you. Just, just wait. Jackson Pollock. Oh, I should have let you in. I should let you. 
Sorry, you can ask the question first. She got that. And she got. She was. She's like, I got this. I knew this I one. I knew this one. I knew it. Jackson Pollock is correct. All right. This artist is famous for pop art. Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol. Is it? All right. Oh, my God. Next question. How long is New Zealand's 90-mile beach? I mean, is it too obvious to guess 90 miles? (laughs) (laughs) Is it a trick? I don't know. It is a trick because it is not 90 miles. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm going to guess... 40 miles. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Ah, sorry. Womp, womp. Is, it, is it a riddle? What is it? It is 55 miles. Oh. Close, but not too close. I wonder why the name. Did someone just measure it wrong? I think they probably did. Georgia O'Keeffe is known for what? She's known for her flower paintings that look like vaginas. She is. And landscapes, but flowers and landscapes. <laughs> flowers. I added too much. Oh. Uh, I work here, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. Oh, man. All the way. All, All the way, way back. In case. Uh, yeah. Whatever we're on, what year was Polly Pocket invented? I loved Polly Pockets. All right. What year was Polly Pocket invented? Man, I'm not doing well so far. I'm not going to know this <laughs> one either. <laughs> Is the, I mean, it seemed like it was probably the 80s or the 90s. But maybe it was the 90s. Oh, I'm going back. Because <laughs> uh, that was a big part of my childhood. I loved Polly Pockets. I'm going to guess uh, 1993. Or 96. No. Oh, no. (laughs) Polly Pocket was invented in 1989. Dang it. I was in the right ballpark. I was right there. It was close. All right. Central America is made up of how many countries? Oh, man. I don't know. Any hints there? Uh... It's less than 10. Oh, I don't know my geography. I just paint pictures, you guys. Okay. Um, Six? That doesn't seem like enough. No. (laughs) You were close. What is it? Not six. Okay. Answer? Oh, no. It's seven. Oh, my gosh. I was right there. I'm right there. Okay. I feel okay about that. I know I didn't get it right, but I still feel like not too far off. All right. Which country drinks? Oh. Oh. Gotta have that, yeah. Which country drinks the most beer per capita? Oh, I feel like it'd be Ireland. It is not Ireland. It's not Ireland? Maybe it's America. Well, the U.S. <laughs> I don't know. No, that's going to be the Czech Republic. Uh-huh. Oh man, that's hard. Even she said, ah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, no, dear me. Ha <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Next question is true oh, or like false? A, a gorilla. A gorilla is a monkey. These are hard questions. Ooh. Mm. I feel like it's like a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle <laughs> is not a square. <laughs> ooh. Ooh, 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 ah, ah. I know. I feel like do they fall in? Uh, I don't know. I will say true. What? It falls False. in the no. same category. No, no it doesn't. Not. <laughs> Gorillas Dude. are actually classified as apes. humans. Wow. Oh. They're classified okay. as yes, apes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So apes are different. Who said than humans? humans? <laughs> yes. The difference between monkeys, gorillas, and apes is wow. the fact that monkeys have tails. The gorillas oh, and, and the apes do not. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Is a chimpanzee an ape then? Or is it that would its be own considered, category? 
I think a chimp chimp doesn't have a tail. It doesn't doesn't have a tail. So I would think it would be in the ape category. So what about so what about Curious George? Is he a monkey or ape? Chimps don't. They don't have tails. Curious George has a tail, right? Yeah, I don't think he's an ape though. No, he does. He's a chimp. Is he a chimp? I think he's an ape. Hold on. I don't know, bro. We're all we're all wrong. I definitely did not get seven out of ten right. No, (laughs) not close. No, wow. So chimpanzees are classified also. Um, they it says they fall into two categories: Chimps? great apes, mm-hmm. okay, and monkeys. Wow! How? Because they don't. The, the, mean, the many differences between the two, but the easiest way to tell if a primate like, is a me? monkey or right. a great ape is by noting whether or not they have a tail. Wow! So, so some chimpanzees do have tails. Yeah, okay. some do have. Interesting. Yeah, you just want to take the show over? Is that how it's going today? Yeah. Come here. Come on. Yeah. Come here. No. no. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Is that I, all this? Yeah, that was the last okay. question. Last Curious George is a monkey. He okay. is a monkey. He doesn't have a tail. He doesn't have a tail. Yeah. Uh, bro, I'm so I think in the uh, earlier versions of uh, Curious George, I think he did have a tail. I said, okay. You asking the wrong person. But anyway... Thank you, everyone, for watching. Gonna... We appreciate it. Uh, give her her phone back, Mama. <laughs> she, she would take your phone and run off, too. And uh, thank you, um, Courtney. We really appreciate you coming through. Thank you um, for having me. For sure. We appreciate you a lot. We love your uh, art. We love your murals. We love what you're doing. Uh, make sure to go to spindlesdesignco.com to check it out. If you want a mural on your business, she is great at it. Uh, she also does weddings and uh, other um, examples of her work are on the website. And on Instagram, it's also Spindles Design Co. Right on, yeah. on Instagram. Those are my two Check places. Her out. She's really, really dope person and a great artist, and uh, we appreciate you a lot for real. And uh, let's go ahead and end it out, man. Uh, let's see. Holla, holla. Thanks for watching another episode of Habari Live. Thanks for watching another episode of Habari Live. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and get updates on news, the podcast, and more. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget to visit www.habarientertainment.com. See you next week. Peace.